eight. The, no the night we were arrested? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess it was about 2 a.m. And I saw this light, you know, and I woke up and it was the policeman standing beside the bed. <laughs> and he told us to get up, that we was under arrest. In 1958, Mildred and Richard Loving were about to change history for many interracial couples in America. During the 1960s, colored people and white people were very segregated. Restricted areas would prohibit colored and white people from being in the same room, let alone get married. That all changed when Mildred and Richard Loving decided to get married and break the barrier of love. After slavery was abolished, there was still separation between the American citizens. This lasted for a very long time until many Americans demanded a change. Civil rights movements skyrocketed in the 1960s. The most influential person at the time was Dr. Martin Luther King. He spoke out against the segregation going on, which soon led to justice. This nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creeds. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have Even after justice was made, there was still an injustice and segregation. Even in modern day, injustice still exists in the country. Although every aspect of America seems to be separated, love is what brought us together. Richard Loving was born on October 29, 1933. He was 17 years old when he met Mildred. Mildred Loving was born on June 22, 1939. She was 11 years old when she met Richard. They were family friends but did not begin to date until later on in their lives. Richard Loving was of Irish and British descent, making him white. Mildred Loving was of Native American and African American descent, making her a person of color. This quickly made it harder for the couple to be with one another. Richard and Mildred got married in June of 1958, after Mildred found out she was pregnant. They drove down to Washington, D.C. with only Mildred's father accompanying them. They drove back to Virginia in hopes of being able to keep their marriage a secret. This didn't go as planned when on July 11, 1958, at 2 a.m., the Virginia State Police Department burst into the couple's home without warrant or warrant. At the time, they lived with Mildred's family. When the police burst into the couple's room, the couple proceeded to show them their marriage papers. Unfortunately, these papers were invalid in the state of Virginia. They proceeded to arrest the couple without any warrant. Richard spent a night in jail when he was bailed out the next day by his sister on a $1,000 bond. Mildred, however, was not so lucky. She spent three nights in jail while she was pregnant. The police did not let Richard bail Mildred out because they were both different races. She was bailed out three nights later by her father. In 1959, they got a lawyer to represent them in the case of the so-called crime. When they went to the hearing, Judge Leon M. Bazale sentenced the couple to one year in prison but suspended the sentence. He gave the couple three choices. They either get a divorce and walk free no prison time, stay married and take the one year sentence, or stay married and leave the state of Virginia for 25 years. They chose the last choice. They soon relocated to Washington, D.C. and raised their three children. They had two sons, Sidney, who was born on January 27, 1957, and Donald Loving, who was born on October 8, 1958, and one daughter, Peggy Loving. They lived there for six years until in 1964, Mildred took action. Mildred Loving wrote a letter to Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy to get help. 
He then referred her to the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union. Two lawyers from the union, Bernard Cohen and Philip Herkshop, picked up the case and represented them. We have three children and cannot afford an attorney. We wrote to the attorney general. He suggested that we get in touch with you for advice. Please help us if you can. Hope to hear from you real soon. Yours truly, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Loving. And it was that simple letter that got us into this not so simple case. Protection. We advance the argument that these statutes are slavery statutes. They're meant to keep the Negro people in the badges and bonds of slavery. The outrageous civil effects of these statutes are not always apparent yes, right away. the court to decide that a state may not pay, pass a law which proscribes marriage between two consenting, competent adults based but on... But because Philip Herkshop was not qualified to file a case in front of court, he was out of law school for two years. Anything he wrote had been signed off to Bernard Cohen. For years, they tried to file a motion with their original court. After trying for years, in April of 1967, their cases got filed with their Supreme Court. The case of Loving v. Virginia was put into action. Representing Virginia was Attorney General Robert D. McLean III. In his case, he proceeded to explain how the act of mitigation was unconstitutional. During the trial, various news outlets caught wind of the situation. The Lovings had multiple interviews, including Time Magazine and ABC News. These interviews are said to have helped the Loving case. In one interview, Richard was asked, Is there anything that the justices should know? Richard responded with, Yes, tell the judge I love my wife. Bye. Finally, after nine long years, the Lovings were legally married. They built their first house together on an acre of land that Richard's father gave them. Sadly, eight years later, Richard Loving was killed in a car crash. Mildred never remarried. After Richard's death, Mildred stayed in the home that he built them, surrounded by friends and family. Mildred lived a quiet and private life and de declined interviews, staying clear of the spotlight. Mildred did, however, make an exception in June 2007. This was the 40th anniversary of the Loving vs. Virginia ruling. Three people who were working on behalf of a gay rights faith group in America went to Mildred for her thoughts on same-sex marriage. After careful reflection and discussions, Mildred issued a statement that read, I believe all Americans, no matter their race, no matter their sex, no matter their sexual orientation, should have the same freedom to marry. Government has no business imposing on some people's beliefs over others, especially if it denies people's civil rights. With the help of very important people, the loving couple left behind a great legacy that inspired many people. There is little doubt about the loving's legacy. There is an unofficial celebration on June 12th called Loving Day, honoring the anniversary of the Supreme Court decision. Mildred and Richard fought for their rights and broke these barriers for many of Americans to follow. Being able to love who you want is one of the most important things in life, and the loving couple truly showed this. They stood up for what they believed in and had the courage to change history. Although this started out as two innocent people trying to love each other, it became a bigger message that helped many people. Now, everyone is able to love each other. This barrier was very hard to break and took lots of hard work make, to make right. With courage and strength, Mildred and Richard Loving sacrificed everything for, for not just the love of each other, but the love of everyone. After the Loving couple broke these difficult barriers, they left behind an amazing legacy that affected the country as we know it. It is considered one of the most significant legal decisions of the civil rights era.